I was just reading something here about Jimi Hendrix. Um, that uh, after two weeks after uh, Woodstock, what are we talking about? 1969 or what? When was Woodstock? Yeah, it looks like 1960. Yeah, 1969. Okay. Um, let me let me look at this article again here. This article caught my attention. Um, yeah, two weeks after the Woodstock. Um, for those of you that seen that movie, if you haven't seen the con- if you haven't been to the concert, um, maybe you've seen the movie, or maybe you've seen a video. Yeah, the Jimi Hendrix experience. It was the last band to play, and he did a rendition of the Star Spangled Banner that I play on here too. Yeah, and um, and uh, this was designed as a protest. To the Vietnam War, which is uh, very much in the same category as what uh, George Bush did in sending soldiers to Iraq to um, uh, overthrow Saddam Hussein because they said they had evidence of that Iraq had um, weapons of mass destruction. And, uh, of course, we all know how that turned out. (laughs) Vietnam was even worse than that. And America really didn't have any business over there. The things they were doing was beyond hell. And uh, I know I have relatives who who served in that war, but, you know, personally, I don't support that war. I've always felt that that was was the, um, that should have never happened. Yeah, because uh, so many young boys were killed, and needlessly, and uh, and that that was unnecessary. And I I don't think that was patriotic at all. Same thing with uh, uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. I I feel the same way about that. That's not a war f- to uh, protect freedom and liberty. That's total bullshit. That that war is about oil. Too bad the the politicians can't just go duke it out, yeah. Instead of sending innocent soldiers over there and you know brainwashing them into thinking they're fighting for peace and um, freedom, defending freedom. And that's that's all that's all um, incorrect. So during that concert, Jimi Hendrix played a version, his version of the Star Spangled Banner. Now, when I first saw that and heard this. Whoa, man, I was blown away, yeah? So I was like, wow, guitar is doing all that, yeah? And, um, of course, he's using some effects, but more, mostly, it's um, it's the guitar. And, um, it, you know, I, I myself, I am a guitar player, too, but my influence, um, my influences are more Chuck Berry and and um uh, that guy from Boston um the band called Boston Tom Schultz and uh Jimmy Page from Led Zeppelin and uh Richie Blackmore from Deep Purple and plus his own music Blackmore's Rainbow and um Eddie Van Halen yeah these are my my influences Jimi Hendrix I thought was really impressive um, how he was handling the guitar was just amazing. Uh, Jimi Hendrix started out as a, a rhythm and blues guitar player, backing up some Harlem bands, some um, R- R&B bands, and he was mainly in the background, yeah, just playing that ding 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 ding, ding and just really, you know, that kind of R&B kind of stuff, where you the guitar is not really a prominent piece of the band it's some it's more like a background noise yeah that's uh and i always that's one of the things i don't like about r&b music is they don't they don't really utilize the guitar at all and um it's more drums and bass and you know and, than anything else so um and then from what i remember 
I think uh, he got a chance to go to London, and uh, he was inspired by what was going on there. And then he took the guitar to a, a new level and became a rock star over there. Yeah, And um, uh, I know he lived there for several years to the point of he developed a British accent. And um, then he came back to America, uh, you know, with this, this band and and took America by storm next. But what I found really funny is that black people saw him as the guy who sold out to to become popular with white white people. This article that I'm looking at, it says that... Uh, uh, you know, after two weeks after that, uh, this uh, um, performance of the Star Spangled Banner, he he wanted to perform a, a free concert for he said for my people. He said, yeah. So he they scheduled this concert in Harlem, which is a really big black neighborhood in uh, New York City. I don't know which part of New York City, but a lot of African Americans live there, you know. And so, when he was, um, ag- that's he he lived there before, yeah. He, that that was his home. As soon as he got on a stage, somebody threw a bottle at him, and luckily it missed, and it it, it, it smashed on one of his speaker cases. Um, people were throwing eggs at him, and. Um, he played on anyway, yeah. And the more he played, the crowd dissipated. They they didn't like him at all. And um, I thought, wow, isn't that something? Here you have one of the greatest guitar players, one of the greatest rock and roll guitar players ever. And um, the man played guitar because he loves the guitar. Uh, he did not say, well, I'm a black man, so I'm going to play black music. You see what I'm saying? He said, I like this kind of guitar, and that's what I'm going to do. But his own people saw that as him selling out. They saw that as him trying to be white. But he didn't see it that way. He saw it as, I like this kind of guitar playing. I like what I do with the guitar. And that's what I'm going to do. It turned out that kind of guitar playing appealed more to white people than it did black people. But that wasn't his intention. His intention was, I like this kind of music, so I'm going to play that kind of music. And of course, a lot of white people did like it, but a lot of black people didn't. It's like he was rejected by his own people. Let me tell you something. I know exactly what that feels like. I'm not trying to compare myself to Jimi Hendrix. Not at all. He is a master. But the same thing happens to me too. Years ago, um, in the early 1990s, I just got in my own recording studio and I started to... to uh, uh, record my own music. Okay, years ago, in, the, in about 1992 to 1994, uh, I decided to uh, send my tapes out to Native American music companies, rec- record companies. A lot of these companies were putting out contemporary music that's uh, written by Indians, yeah, by Native people. Phoenix, uh, Arizona has this company called Canyon Records in Albuquerque. There's Soar Corporation in Canada. I don't know. I forgot what they're called already. Um, North Dakota had something called Makoche Records, or was that in Minnesota? I can't remember. But there were these Indian recording companies popping up all over the place. And so I thought, well, I'd like to get my music heard. I'd like to get it out there. So I recorded some songs and um, I sent it out to uh, to other recording companies. Then I found out that 
of all of these Indian recording companies, only one's actually owned by an Indian. The others are all non-Indian. Everybody who works in their studios are non-Indian. So I thought oh, that's 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 interesting, yeah. Um, but anyway, I sent my music to these recording companies, and everyone rejected me except one. Yeah. But what do you think were the reasons for rejecting my music were? Okay. Remember, I said that these most of these record labels. Uh, these Native American Indian record labels, most of them are white people, okay? Guess what they told me, why they rejected my songs? They said I sounded white. They said that my music doesn't sound Indian. One of them even said Indians are not supposed to play guitar like that. Yeah, and the only record company that wanted to sign me was the Sora Corporation. But um, I, I did my research on that that company, and I found out that uh, a lot of uh, recording artists were trying to get out of their contracts because they realized they were tricked. So I decided not to sign with Thor. Yeah, and I just decided I'll just I'm just going to do this on my own, have fun. Yeah, because when you have a recording contract. You're not gonna get rich, no way. No, no way. Yeah, you're always gonna be owing money. So, I decided I'm just gonna do this on my own and just have fun with it. That that way, I'm in control and I don't have to worry about somebody bossing me around, telling me I don't sound like an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> so here's these non-Indian guys telling me. You know, you don't sound Indian enough. That blew me away, yeah? I, I At first I was angry and I was like, who are they to say, you know, that I don't sound Indian enough? And and then I started sending my music to um, Native American radio stations. And the only ones that played me were those that were in the city. Yeah, New York City and... Dallas, Texas, San Francisco, California. And they're really big cities, Denver, Colorado. I was getting airplay on the Indian stations there. But locally, even from my own reservation, Cheyenne River Sioux Reservation, even from there, they, uh, people were telling me, I, I, do, I do white people's music. That's what they were saying. People were saying, yeah, David does white people's music. That's what this article caught my attention, yeah, that, that Jimi Hendrix uh, tried to put on a free concert for his people in Harlem, and uh, it, it was greeted with, you know, broken you know, bottles thrown at them and uh, eggs thrown at them. They played anyway. The more he played, the more people just walked away. That they all felt that he sold out, that he, he does white people's music. I do, I just that really had to make me laugh because I like I said I'm not trying to compare myself to him, but I know what that's like. And some people were telling me, David, maybe you should just go ahead and sound Indian, yeah, just jump through the hoops. Then once once you're known, then you can say, okay, I'm not going to record any more for you until you let me do it my way. And I said, you know, I can't sacrifice these songs. Yeah, I cannot um, compromise because these songs are, are, are done the way I want them done and I don't want it to be prostituted. I don't want it to be, you know, a bunch of makeup put on it so it looks like a $2 whore. Does that really exist, a $2 whore? <laughs> Gee, that's, that's pretty desperate there, yeah? <laughs> Anyway, um, I, I I just refused. Yeah, I, I was like, I know I'm gonna do what I want to do, and if people don't like it, then they don't have to listen to my music. But I bet you anything, somebody's gonna like it. Yeah, and it's okay, even if they don't like it, and if they do like it, that's not that's not what's important. What's important is that this is something I can do, and I enjoy doing it, 
And if people like it, good. If they don't, that's okay too. Yeah. So um, that's the that's the um, uh, what you call it, the stance I took. And so I didn't let it bother me that all these record companies were saying to me, David, you don't sound like an Indian. David, Indians don't play guitar like that. Yeah, and, and um, let me play you something. This I I I, I submitted this song um, to a, a a number of record companies, Indian record companies. This is one of those songs they told me that I didn't sound Indian enough. <laughs> Yeah. 
Japanese. It doesn't matter at all. The race doesn't make a difference to me. What what I like is the, if it appeals to me. Yeah? And I learn from that. I, I learn from other guitar players. I, I'm influenced by other guitar players. It has nothing to do with race. That's the bottom line. Yeah? That's that's how I am. And so, I, like, I might hear something, you know, from uh, some rock group, um, like Deep Purple. And uh, I'll, I'll, I'll think, gee, that's a nice sounding, you know, what kind of scale is he using? And um, I was like, wow, that is really cool. It's exotic, yeah? And since I was classically trained, I knew it was a um, dominant Phrygian mode. And uh, I was like, that is kick-ass. A lot of music from the Mediterranean uses that scale, yeah, from Greece to Spain, uh, southern parts of France, you know, Algeria, Morocco, you know, uh, um, those countries will use that scale. That's why it's called a, it, it's it's a mode, yeah, it's a certain kind of mode, and and the, uh, Hungarian music is also kind of like that too, and um. I like that sound, yeah. That's th- that sound just appeals to me. It doesn't matter, you know, whether it's it's is this is this a white people's scale? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Music has no boundaries. And so when somebody's telling me, David, you don't sound Indian enough, I don't give a shit. And I'm not going to be bow down to that. I'm not going to uh, force myself to fit another person's um, opinion on what an Indian musician should sound like. So I I, I totally identify with what uh, Jimi Hendrix went through because I feel that he's the same way. You know, that he loves guitar and... uh, he found out things he could do with it other than just playing chords and simple uh, solos. He could really go to town on it and just took it to new levels. And um, that's what that's what amazed me. Yeah, when I saw early concert footage of him, I was like, "Holy, this guy's doing all kinds of cool things." It's so f- funny. That you know, lots of times people are not welcome by their own people. Yeah, that their own people will go against them. Like what what I what I was saying, reading here with Jimi Hendrix and this free concert that he wanted to give to his black people. He worked there. He lived there for a number of years. And he, you know, he's now he's successful. He's a famous guy, and and he wants to perform at his, you know, where he Harlem, you know, and uh, and he's greeted with disgust. I know what that's like. Yeah. Well, why is it that it's that way? Why is that da- dynamic like that, where your own people reject you? And they tell you that what you're doing is not right, that what you're doing is not whatever your culture is, and that you're a sellout or you're trying to be, you know, a, a different culture, you know. And I heard all of that, and it never bothered me because I never saw, you know, Richie Blackmore as a white man or Chuck Berry as a black man or Akira. Takasaki as a Japanese man. He's a, a guitar player from Japan. I never saw them as skin color. I saw them as guitar players. In my opinion, my personal opinion, Chuck Berry's the real king of rock and roll. He's what made it rock. Yeah, he's what made it rock and roll. And uh, that's my personal belief. And um, I, I think there's a lot of people out there who agree with that. 
It doesn't have anything to do with him being black. It's his guitar, yeah, and, and what he did. It's amazing. So there you go, yeah, and and you can even take that back in history. Crazy Horse was also rejected by his own people. A lot of people don't want to admit that, yeah. A lot of people don't want to admit that, but. Among the Oglalas, he really was a reject, because his mother's not from there. His mother's a Hoju Lakota, who live on Cheyenne River today. And so he himself is enrolled on Cheyenne River. Yeah, he's not enrolled in the on the Pine Ridge Sioux Reservation, because he spent his summers with his mom and her people. Their marriage was really bad. Yeah, the, her his dad was really a no good guy. And um, so the people, the Oglala people, had a lot of reasons to to uh, not like him. So he stuck out. Yeah, His own people went against him. It's so, it's so amazing, you know, that there's a saying that the prophet is not wanted in his own country. There's a lot of truth to that. Yeah, there's a lot of truth to that. Why is it that way? Yeah, like you, even myself, not just in my music, but when I talk about Lakota Star Knowledge, most Lakota people don't know it. And I already gave you the reason why. Yeah, so when I tell these stories, they think I'm just making it up. They don't realize that this is this is the real thing. They don't realize they're brainwashed. Yeah? And, and by Christianity into dualistic thinking creatures. And we don't think like our ancestors anymore. But yes, this is this is how things were. Yeah, that uh, a lot of times people, you know, the, um, you know, you 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 go out there, you grow up, and you go out in the real world. You learn, you make your way, and and then um, you get all these ideas and stuff like that. These, you learn a lot of things, and you come back to the reservation, and people think, hey, you think you're better than us? Yeah. You're, trying to, you're just trying to be white. Yeah? Why are you trying to be white? Why is it you're always having white girlfriends? What's wrong with What's wrong with the Lakota women? See, I get that all the time, and that's not it at all. Yeah, it doesn't. The a girl's race has nothing to do with it. This is not my concern. This the skin color does not concern me, because. That's not where peace lies. Yeah, Peace does not lie in the skin color. Peace does not dwell in the color of your skin. It dwells deep within you where there is no skin color, where there is no race. That's the sacred center. So, yeah. Now, another interesting fact that a lot of people don't know is that Jimi Hendrix is part Indian. Yeah, <laughs> that's why I'm bringing it up. Yeah, he's he is part Indian. I can't remember the tribe. I think it's Creek. That's amazing. I think. I really thought that was uh, that was interesting. That you know he wanted to do this this uh, concert for for uh, you know the the neighborhood that he grew up not grew up but that he lived in. And they all booed him. They all, you know, they greeted him with bottles thrown at him, eggs thrown at him. As he continued to play, they walked away. Yeah, they started to um, get up and leave. That's happened to me too. <laughs> yeah, because people were saying I sound white. That uh, I don't hang around. I don't. I didn't socialize too much because I was too into my music. And also, where I lived on the reservation was a really small town, and most of everybody was drinking alcohol. And I decided not to do that. So, for that reason, I didn't socialize. Yeah, and uh, so people came up with all kinds of you know ideas or whatever saying gee david you know you must be white 
Yeah. Why 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 are you being a white person? You know? <laughs> you're accused of all these things and not one bit of it is true. And even if it was true, so what? It's none of their business. Yeah. I wanted to uh live my life the way I wanna live it. Uh, play guitar the way I wanna play guitar. And if people think I'm not sounding Indian, I don't care. I'm not an Indian guitar player. I'm a guitar player. Period. My race has nothing to do with it. And I think that's what, um, that's the same problem Jimi Hendrix had, in that the black people didn't see him as one of them because he had a lot of white fans. Yeah. So they saw him as selling out. They saw him as him trying to be a white guy. And it had nothing to do with that. He just liked that kind of music. That's his style. Yeah. And that style influenced thousands, if not millions, of guitar players all over this world. Even people today are still being influenced by um, his guitar playing. The most important thing is that he did what he wanted to do. He did it the way he wanted to do it, and he succeeded. That's what you call a pioneer. Yeah? And uh, like I said, skin color, for me, skin color has done nothing to do with if I'm going to like uh, uh, a musician or whatever. Anyway, just thought I'd share that. <laughs>